Biomedical engineering, what is it? I mean, is it biology? Is it becoming almost a doctor? Is it engineering? Not really. Let's talk about this in today's video. We're going to talk about what biomedical engineering is, what you can get out of it, and how much money can you actually make by studying this degree? I mean, hint, hint, did you check out my last video? Um, okay, all jokes aside, I've pretty much done my undergrad in this field, my master's in this field, and now I've been working in this core field of biomedical engineering. So I feel like I'm in a good position to talk a little bit about this fastest growing field, in my opinion, and I'll tell you why in just a couple minutes. So let's get started with the video. So biomedical engineering, known as bioengineering in some cases, BME, whatever you call it, is basically a STEM field, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So the idea is to use engineering principles to advance medicine so that we can make lives of doctors easier. Now this can be in the form of uh, figuring out what, it, what the disease is or diagnosing a disease. It can be in the form of treating a disease or therapeutic, or it can be in the form of monitoring a disease. So if you're leaning more towards the diagnostic side, this includes things like all of your scans, like your x-ray scans, your ultrasound scans. Basically think of anything that you would go into a doctor's office when you need to find out what's wrong with you. Literally any piece of machine or equipment or technology that you use or step into is probably designed by a biomedical engineer and that's what the core um, curriculum of this degree involves. So I still remember when I was studying this degree in my undergrad, I had like separate courses for each machine. Like I literally had a course called ultrasound and its applications, x-rays, um neurology so basically the idea is i would have to first study about what the disease or what the problem was from like a human anatomy and physiology perspective and then we would be taught how we can use principles of physics mathematics technology basically to solve that problem so it's really like an intertwined degree like i i tell i tell a lot of people that if you don't like bi biology and you don't like math this is definitely not a degree for you. But if you like both equally, maybe biology even a little bit more than math, you know, this is like a perfect combination of that degree. So that covers the diagnostic part of it. Now talking about the therapeutic part of it, this involves monitoring the disease. It can be stuff like your artificial organs. Um, instead of a clean amputation, we you know, give the ability to a patient to walk. That is all thanks to artificial organs. There are courses like orthopedics where you extensively study the reaction of your body and how different materials would uh, react with it. Like think about it, if you're cutting open an arm and you just stick like a steel or aluminum or titanium, how do you know that your body's not going to reject that foreign piece of substance? Essentially what your body's going to do, and this happens a lot, we, we, we literally studied this in biomaterials endlessly is you there's something called biocompatibility where you need to study if your body will treat any foreign substance as like an attack so if it does that it will start rejecting that and essentially your body will start shutting down uh, but other things that are included in therapeutics involve stuff like drug delivery systems um, all of your pills that you take like have you ever stopped to think about what it's actually doing? Remember, you know how some tablets are just like tiny and round, but then some are like capsules. Um, I don't know if you guys did this, but when I was a kid, I'd always like open those capsules up to see what's inside. It would always be a powder. I never really understood the point of the capsule. I'm like, you know, I could have just taken the powder. It would have been smaller. Anyway, that is the whole drug. So basically understanding how you could effectively deliver that drug into your body. What's the fastest way? What's the safest way? And is there a way we can improve this technique? I know that there are a lot of doctors who eventually go into research and I'm not saying that they're not capable of doing this, but the field of biomedical engineering is precisely if you're interested in doing this. So in short, if I had to summarize this field, it's basically that you, you're not a doctor, but you're very well working with diseases and how to treat them. So I basically spoke about the broad areas of you know, biomedical engineering and from everything that I've spoken um, up till now, you guys probably have an idea that this field is pretty elaborate. There are so many routes you can specialize in and shape your career that way. 
Now, with that in mind, I want to go over some of the specializations that you can do if you do decide to go into biomedical engineering. Not, not the easiest way to remember this is you can add bio in front of basically any engineering discipline. There are bioelectronics like, for example, think about designing, you know, um, a chip that you could insert underneath your skin that would constantly read your entire body's like, um, you know, vitals, that's bioelectronics. There's biomaterials where, again, you study about how different substances, um, foreign substances react with your body and what's biocompatible, what your body is okay with and what it really doesn't like. There's computational biology where you study a lot about how you can effectively analyze the data and what what's the most important information you can get out of it. Now think about it, an x-ray scan is pretty much useless if someone doesn't know how to read it, right? That is all computation biology. Can you, can we make things faster if a computer were to do it? Um, if there aren't enough doctors available to read the scan, can we just run it through a MATLAB code um, where the output of that code would be all the things that we would need to know. There's medical engineering as a whole separate discipline where we precisely think of different ways we can image. Is there a better imaging technique apart from x-rays, MRIs, CT scans, where we can get more information so that we don't have to cut open a person or even if we have to do that in case of an in injury or something, uh, we have the most amount of information available beforehand. And then of course, there's microbiology, there's bio nanotechnology, which again, um, pretty much going smaller and smaller onto size. Um, is there a faster way we can do this? Um, think about something called an electronic pill, like the pill that you actually take as a drug. Imagine the same pill, but when you swallow it, what it does is it kind of like turns into like this alien camera robotic thing. It images your insides, it takes pictures, and it conveys that information through a Bluetooth device through your, to your phone. That way, it just eliminates the whole need to do laparoscopic surgeries or exploratory um, surgeries in any way. Like that would be so cool. And I'm not just like making this up as I go. Most of these things are something. Most of these things are already being researched upon, and uh, you'll see that this is essentially what a biomedical engineer would be in involved with. And I guess like now is a good time to point out that the cool thing that I like about biomedical engineering is say you've completed your undergraduate in something like electronics or mechanical engineering you can still pursue a career in biomedical engineering because you can take that as a master's level course and use all that knowledge from your undergraduate degree electronics mechanics computer even and apply that into healthcare so these are just like two disciplines that just nicely fit, fit together biomedical engineering goes well with any other field and that knowledge and, and that intellectual knowledge that you've gained through years of studying does not go waste. The fact that this field has direct positive impact on human health is one of the reasons why I feel it's really satisfying to work in this as a career. The other thing is if you're someone who really enjoys multitasking, this is definitely for you. Um, you're always like learning multiple things. Like think about it in order to learn biomechanics, you first have to learn mechanics and then you can see how you'll, you know, your body will react to all of these different things. So you're basically learning a little bit of everything and then trying to apply it to the best possible way to the human body. And here's the thing, you know, nobody knows from the start of their undergraduate degree or high school or even the end of their undergraduate degree with what they want to pursue as a career. And I feel like there's a lot of pressure on us from the very beginning. Do you know, what do you want to do? Do you have it all figured out? And when I was an undergraduate degree, I was so sure that, you know, the, the thing that I would like to do and the thing that would be really cool would be to design artificial organs and go into orthopedics. So that was my entire focus. And I had so many projects revolving around that. A, a prime example was the prosthetic arm that I built to um, suppress hand tremors. Um, but as I moved on into my third and my fourth year, I was exposed to this area of microfluidics and something called a lab on chip technology at Harvard. And I thought that was really cool. So my interest like changed from that and now I wanted to do this. Um, that stuck along for some more time. And by the time I finished my undergrad, I felt like I wasn't done. I wanted to know more about this field that I kind of like left midway. 
that led me to doing my master's in Cornell University. Um, I continue to apply and learn more about how I can, you know, use my skills to develop this field of microfluidics. And eventually that stuck around even further. And now I'm in a job which is basically lab on chip and microfluidics. And I absolutely love it. I've gotten a paper published in a really high impact journal when uh, I was at Harvard Medical School. And this has just been all such a fulfilling right to just do so many different things so my point here by telling you guys all this is that it's okay if you don't know or you don't have it figured out but you just know some pieces of it you know yeah i think this is something i want to do it might be fun to try out that's all the push and that's all the motivation that you need if you think you might be interested the only way to be sure and to be firm on that decision is to try it out that's all I'm going to say. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fail, but just make sure that whatever you pick, you're putting your 100% effort in, um, in making yourself better at that craft. Okay. So that's a lot of uh, motivation and inspiration talk. Let's come down to the important stuff. Numbers. How much can you actually make with this biomedical engineering degree? And what does your career look like? Now, come on, spoiler alert, I bought a Mercedes at 26. So I'm just gonna put it out there that it's a very promising career finance-wise and you're not gonna fall short um, or regret this in terms of being financially independent. Now, according to the US Department of Labor, the mean salary for a biomedical engineer revolves somewhere around $95,000 per year with the top 15% earning about $150,000 per year. Now, I just want to point out that this whole category is very, very elaborate because this involves uh, fresh graduates ex as well as people who've had years and years of experience. So that's like a good range to have in mind when you're thinking of, you know, pursuing this degree. Now, economically speaking, let's treat this entire field like it's on the stock market. The diagnostic industry is currently tripling every year, which means that there are going to be more jobs. There are going to be more higher paying jobs and the advancements that we make, like I mentioned before, by using the expertise of chemistry, physics, mechanical engineering, AI, the more and more we get all of this into healthcare, this area is just going to blow up. So yeah, there you have it. I think that is my quick synopsis and take on biomedical engineering, what it's all about. So at this point, let's go ahead and do the giveaway question. Um, Comment down below, hashtag crazy Medusa. What's your area of interest? Now, hold on, before you answer, I don't want any of those cliche answers that I wanna become an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer. Come on, I want specific answers of what exactly you want to do. Your area of interest is not what a degree name is. Your area of interest is what impact you wanna have on the society and in the community. I hope that this video inspired you a little bit, motivated you, or even just provided basically a slightest bit of uh, reassurance and information with what biomedical engineering is all about. Um, if you have any other questions that I probably didn't go over in this video about this field, feel free to drop them in the comment below. I go through all of them and I'll try my best to give you guys um, an appropriate answer. But until then, stay safe. If you haven't watched my last video, come on, it's the Mercedes pickup vlog. Watch that right over here. Or if you want to go ahead and watch a different playlist, you can do so right over here. But um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.